Roadrunners Hall of Fame Class of 2024, Vanessa Edwards. And she's only about six foot. She played in the low post for us, but she could shoot. She grew up in Trinidad. I never, I always said, well, how can you shoot so good? I mean, she could shoot from anywhere. And uh, she grew up shooting on a stick. They just, she didn't have a backboard. Daryl Smith took over the head coaching duties of the women's basketball program in 1990 and quickly turned the Roadrunners into a contender for the next eight years. The addition of Vanessa Edwards took it to another level. Jerry called me and he goes, hey, do you know how good this player is? I go, no, she told me she averaged like 25 out there. She's an intramural player. I have any idea who she is. He goes, hey, she can play anywhere in the nation, Daryl. Edwards transferred to Metro State in 1994 as a junior from Panhandle State but came in with a little baggage. She basically said, look, I, don't, I just want to play basketball. I don't do team functions. I don't want to lift weights. I just go to practice. And that's what I want to do. Of course, I just start laughing. She goes, I don't, I don't really want to hang out with my teammates. I kind of to myself. And I just laughed. I said, well, whatever, right? Brought her. And she was true to her word, man. We were 2-12. and 12. I'm not going to say it was her responsibility because she was a great player. But we had friction. We had this great team coming back. And she shows up. She's... I'm not going to say she's better than everybody, but she certainly did a lot of things better than everybody. The product on the court was something to behold as Edwards piled up incredible numbers in her first year. She scored 17 points per game while pulling down eight boards per contest. She won the Colorado Athletic Conference's most valuable player and helped the program go undefeated in conference play at 12 and 0. Right. Well, Vanessa's about six foot. In those days, probably 200 pounds. She's mean looking, never played, never smiled. She used to play behind the post. You know, and I, Vanessa, you got to play in front of the post. I, I don't need to. They won't even throw it in here if I'm guarding. She was right. We, won, we ended up winning 13 games in a row, won the league, and got beat by DU in the, in the conference championship. While the 1994-1995 season was a successful one, Coach Smith told Edwards that things needed to change if she chose to return for her senior season. I told her, look, you're, I need your attitude to change a different way. I didn't think she was going to come back. I just said, I don't care. Uh, you got to, we need to make these changes. She came in. Right, I didn't think she was coming back. Right before the scene started, put a, I would I'll be interested to see if she remembers that. She put a piece of paper on my desk, and I said, "You know, hey, B, what are you doing?" Well, I I, I brought I wrote these out for her. She wrote them down. Hey, I want to be the team leader. We need to go to the NCAA. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm going to practice hard every day. I couldn't get her to practice hard. Edwards was as dominant as ever. She raised her scoring average to 24 points per game. She won the CAC's MVP once again and was named All-America by two publications. I'll be darned if she just changed her whole perspective. She became kind of beloved with her team. She carried us, guys. I mean, she willed us to win a ton of games. We'd, we'd score 45 points, she'd score 25. The University of Denver was the program's biggest rival in those days. After losing a barn burner in the second meeting, Edwards felt she had let the team down, scoring just two points in the game. But the two teams met up in the conference tournament finals, and not only did she step up, scoring 22 first half points, she inspired her team to keep the good times rolling in the second half. But we're putting a lot of pressure on V. You know, somebody else got to step up. I'm not kidding you. We went out. Vanessa scored two points in the second half, and we beat them by 40. We're running an offense. I had 100% offense, which is, hey, move it around and don't shoot. Shoot a layup. That's all you can shoot. We're running this offense, and I'm looking, and there's 10 seconds to go, and they're not even paying attention. They're just running the offense, running the offense. About three seconds ago, I'm screaming, shoot the ball. Shot came off a pick from Vanessa and laid it in wide open, right? And she just ran by me, Vanessa, and she goes, hey, coach, don't sweat it. <laughs> That win propelled the women's basketball team to their first ever NCAA tournament. Despite playing only two years, Edwards is still ninth in career scoring. She is the program's leader in career average at 20.7 points per game and in field goal percentage at almost 57%. She is fifth all time in rebounds per game and owns the highest scoring season, racking up 683 points in her senior season. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations, Vanessa. Well-deserved to join the great players we had at that great run that Metro State had. She's a huge part of it. Holly Roberts, Steph Allen, Farrah McGee, the other girls that are in the Hall of Fame, but a lot of players that aren't, they're all proud of you. Everybody's excited for you. Uh, we're super happy that you're here. We look forward to having a big party tomorrow after the celebration tonight. And uh, I coach for, I'm getting so old, I can't remember how long I coached for. I coached for 29 years at, at a high level. I was a junior high coach and an elementary school coach. I coached for a lot, long time uh, one of my favorite players of all time not because it was always so 
fun and smooth because it wasn't. It was rocky and it's always that journey to, to watch what comes out the end. It's so exciting. And Vanessa, just an amazing person, a great, great basketball player. We're all proud of you, V. Vanessa Edwards, Roadrunners Hall of Fame, Class of 2024. So I get anxiety talking in front of people. So I talk in fast in an accent, nobody understands me, so just do this. That means <laughs> slow down. Okay. So first of all, I want to say thank you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for loving me in the way only he can. He gifted me with the ability to play basketball, where I'm deserving of a Hall of Fame honor, and keeping me alive to accept and appreciate it. So thank you, Lord, for that. <laughs> also, I want to, I'm very grateful for being in a favorable environment, meaning I had the right coach and players to help me be the best I can be on the basketball court. Without them, I wouldn't accomplish this. So I want to thank my coach and my teammates to help me to come to my full potential on the basketball court. It wasn't always peaches and cream, <laughs> but we persevered as a team. I was very competitive back then. And so there was a certain player on our team, but for, for me personally, to, I, an option, being outdone was an option for me. I had to always be the best. And there was this player, Shadow Justice. She always tried to compete with me. <laughs> she came for me every practice. And for her, her goal was to be as good as me. And my goal was to stay a step ahead of her. So that made us better, both of us, you know, uplift our game. And Shallow, thank you for that, for making me the player I am, because you always came for me. <laughs> okay, so with this perseverance and resilience that I had, it helped me through a very difficult time in my life. In 2018, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer, and everybody except me thought I was gonna die. Because when people hear stage four cancer, they just write you off. And so, <laughs> I don't know where I got the strength from. I think it's because for me being an athlete, you know, and I just, as I said, God, I don't want to die. So just please help me. Because the, the regime that they gave me to cure this cancer was a death sentence. Like six seven, eight hours of chemo every day for three months. And I just knew if I did that, I would die. So I asked God to help me, and he did. My best friend in New York, she called me. She said, I want you to meet someone. It was a herbalist. He said to me, if you want to live, forget about the chemo, forget about the surgery, all that stuff. All you need to do is change your diet and just eliminate some stuff in your life, which is alcohol, uh, dairy, meat, be on a plant-based diet, juice every day, and drink herbs, which is what I did. And I'm here to tell the story. So I thank God for that. <laughs> my, my oncologist was very pissed off at me when I thought I wasn't going to do any chemo. And he, he said to me, you have advanced cancer, and you would not live to see 2000. 19. Here we are in 2024. What does he know? <laughs> so I just, I just thank God that I'm here to receive this honor of being inducted into to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Also, with some amazing athletes. And I'm very honored. Thank you to the committee for choosing me. Thank you for everyone who had a part to play in my success at Metro. I just thank everyone. Thank you. <laughs>